Good evening, everyone. It's late again, and um, really, I've been rather sick the past few days, so um, if you hear me sniffing and my voice is sounding weird, then this is um, only partly due to my bad behavior. <coughs> Nevertheless, um, I wanted to talk to you. Um, I'm currently at the loom. This is a different part. I don't think if you've seen this before. Um, I haven't been much in world during the past year. And um, not a whole lot the year before that. Um, so you sometimes forget the peculiar feeling you get when you are in a world and everything around you is different and just takes you away from the place you are. <coughs> Let's have a look around here. I had a sim in Second Life that looked very much like this place, only... well... only a little smaller. I mean, this is a, a, a nine region. Um, island. My place in Second Life was just one region, which is still a lot for Second Life standards. I mean, one region is plenty. It just, you know, with all the space you can get in Open Sim, it really is closer to perfect than anything I could ever do in Second Life, but I'm not, I'm not here to bash Second Life, really. Mm. See what I did there? I just crossed the region. You didn't barely notice. Um, it's one of the funny things. People are complaining about region crossings and how laggy they were and are and, and, and how much we have to do about them with mega regions and... Uh, <coughs> and or uh, arbitrarily sized regions and honestly in OpenSim I don't have much of a problem with region crossings uh, they still lag horribly in Second Life but here I'm just moving very smoothly across um, regions um, You're probably sick of hearing me by now because I did this other interview th the other day w with Justin and um, talked to him like forever about various geeky issues. Um, and um, Maria wrote something about it on Hypergrid Business. This is my my. This is the interview on, on my website. Um, by the way, I did a redesign of of TJIB. I don't know if you've noticed. Uh, I I kind of like it, but then <coughs> I made it, so I'm biased. If you totally hate it, then just you know ignore it, because I can really kind of like it. But um. And and I love hypocrite business. I probably don't show that enough, or show don't show that the way I'm supposed to show it. But I I, lo I love the website. It's not that I'm too much into business. I'm I'm completely not 
the target audience for this. Um, but still, the things she and the guest uh, bloggers wrote about, write about, is always giving me food for thought and many times I don't agree with something or many times I'm getting inf infuriated about some business practice or other but uh, that's just me I've got I'm opinionated um, And uh, she wrote about um, being social on the hypergrid. So that's what we want to talk about today. We want to talk about this, uh, the hypergrid. Um, she makes a good point. The point she makes is that um, it's not all, not all about the technical details. It's not about all about the security <coughs> all about the features or the um <coughs> legal issues but a lot is really about people by the way this is my home um this is one of the very few bills i made that is not that i haven't published anywhere because i kind of like keeping some stuff for myself so this is um Ellie's and my house. I left the door open. And the towers you see in the background are our respective uh, work spaces. You know mine. Hers is mainly st a storage for her here. Um, it's really all about the people because without people there would be no project as Justin himself uh, said so um, <coughs> hypergrid is a great way of bringing people together because really what opens him the, the effect OpenSim has is that it can fragment an already small small uh, community, small group of people, into even smaller groups of people because because OpenSim is free and um, pr really pretty easy to deploy. To deploy um, pretty much anyone can run a grid and and form a community, and so. A lot of people do. <coughs> a lot of people start their own grid and um, try to get a community involved and get it like big enough to make a business out of it or just big enough to form a significant community to have fun for whatever project they are um, interested in and um, the effect that this has is that we have lots of small grids whose communities are pretty much locked or would be locked in another region crossing there um, if it weren't for the hypergrid. Hypergrid enables people from different grids to visit each other. And that's really the good thing. It's really a great thing. Uh, and I want, want to point this out. I don't know if you've noticed this, but during the interview I have been visiting on the hypergrid. I have been coming from TJRB, from my own little place here. <coughs> And just gone to Osgrid and met Justin there. Um, without the hypergrid, I would have had to m make an account on Osgrid. 
and um, probably import some clothes and outfit and hair and textures and stuff that I would, you know, just to make myself kind of presentable. And um, <clears throat> and with all these cores, you would really think twice about where where you really want to going want to be going while using hypergrid. You can go anywhere with as little effort as crossing a region on your own sim. Um, I'm currently in Ina Centaur's Blackfriar Theater. Ina Centaur has had four sims in, in Second Life and has been unable to keep them. It's a long and sad and tragic tale. But the bottom line is um, Linden Lab kind of uh, shut her out and shut some of her sims down. I don't know if all of them are down, but some of them definitely are. And the fate of the remaining ones is unknown. And so um, she sent out a notice last year that anyone who wants to can just go ahead and copy her stuff out of Second Live as long as it's there. And that's what I did. And I tried to recreate some of the things um, in OpenSim. This is one of the fruits of my labor. Um, this is the Blackfriar Theater. I think it's the most beautiful thing she did. Everything she made is kind of centered around Shakespeare and Shakespeare's life and uh, plays, uh, most importantly, Shakespeare's work. And the Black Friar is one of the theaters um, where his plays have been performed. Um, It's not clear what I can do with this because she just said you can co everyone can copy it for themselves. So I'm not sure if I can share it or not. I contacted her um, and sent her a copy, and maybe one day she'll just publish it herself, or hopefully make a sim and op in 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 open sim that um, is open to public so everyone can visit. We'll see. Um. Speaking of um, great works, um, I have two things I want to ask of you. One thing is, go to archive.org. In fact, go to archive.org right now and search for Check Profit. Um, or just go to the address outlined here, archive.org slash details slash Check Profit. And um, download the live albums you can find there. There are many. And listen to the great music, and after that, go to his website, buy his albums. He's amazing. And he was really gracious to allow people to share live recordings of his performances on archive.org for free with all the world. So he's definitely um, a musician to support. Uh, you know... Also, his music is worth listening to, so if you're into any kind of rock, blues, jazz, R&B, you should check it out. The other thing is, go to KWLS, it's a really weird domain, kind of like TGIB or something like that. Um, it's the uh, Key West Literary Seminar where they have a recording of a meeting between Douglas Kaplan and William Gibson on uh, which was on beginning of February 
it's a really, really, really great recording of um, a conversation between the two. Uh, it's really wor well worth listening to. I love listening to William Gibson. He is, um, for those who don't know William Gibson, I can't can't believe anyone really doesn't know, but um, he is a a science fiction author who coined. He always is credited with coining the term cyber phrase, c cyberspace, cyber phrase. Um, but he wrote a lot of um, great novels that are kind of indicative of our time. And um, I don't like him so much for his novels as for his um, thoughts about the time and the place and the world we're living in. Because he made a, a movie in, in uh, 1999, I think, which is called um, No Maps for These Territories, um, which is incidentally the headline of TGIB. <coughs> and the movie is really just him sitting in the back of his sedan as he travels across America talking about the world we're living in. And it just blows your mind. It just blows you away. The way he looks at things and the way he talks about them. It is something, if anything, don't read don't read his books. If anything, watch the movie. It's a bit hard to come by, but you can still get a copy of Amazon, I think. And um, it's chilling sometimes. Um, William Gibson once talked, visited Second Life, in fact, and talked about um, about his book at the time. I think it was uh, Idoru, and. Um, He people were of course curious to know if Second Life was the thing he had always imagined how cyberspace would be like. And he kind of Um, crashed there. Um, let me kill this process. Um, He said yes to some extent, but um, the thing that he did not imagine it to be was that it was this corporate environment. Um, he meant Second Life being the product of Linden Lab. Um, there's a, a video of this. Um, of his appearance in Second Life as on YouTube. I can link to it um, underneath the recording. But what he said is that he always imagined cyberspace to be m done by young people in someone's back room and in the, in the basements uh, off of knocked off servers and uh, just a hacker's uh, group of people that are putting together this wee wild and crazy room. 
uh, the place that is nowhere but it's still a place and um, at the time I think I heard that and I didn't quite get it but with with OpenSim now I think I'm getting it I think um, he's right I think um, cyberspace can't be on the shoulder of one particular entity of one particular company or in any company at all cyberspace needs to be like the web it needs to be distributed and it needs to be so low level that even kids in their basements can run it this is what we have with OpenSim and this is what we have with the hypergrid right now right here and I guess that's the point um, <coughs> Maria wanted to make too we have it what we don't have is a lot of people using it and that's fine by me um, I'm very comfortable with the place I'm at and uh, what I'm doing and the company I keep but I understand that uh, some socially minded people are kind of disappointed that there isn't a lot of uh, creations to choose from a lot of places to go to a lot of people to meet mm. I don't know if that's ever gonna change or I, I don't know if it's ever gonna change in the near future S meaning now in within the next six months or the, a year um, I'm working at it I'm I'm trying whatever I can with little I can to to change it and kind of toot the horn but you know you have to admit second life itself is a small place and um, <coughs> so we're kind of a small place that draws people from a small place so um, as far as I'm concerned we have to make do with what we have and we do um, but another point that she makes is something that is um, that I find weird and that is why I'm showing you all this stuff that I have here not because I'm vain like that I am vain like that I love my, my world I guess everybody loves their their sim but um, I guess it is natural for us to try to imitate what we know of the real world which is another point that Gibson makes too if you listen to the talk but at the same time I don't think this is appropriate for this environment um, Maria talks about how she loves to would love to have some brand designer clothes to choose from how she would love to have a virtual office and virtual trophies on the walls and um, all kinds of things you have in the real world um, the advantage of it being in virtual is that you would have <coughs> um, you could just meet in the virtual world without really commuting to places and meet in person which is a fair advantage but if you're going that far already why not go a step further and think about what if this is really necessary if what we have in the real world or uh, let me phrase this differently the things we have in the real world desks computers screens they're not arbitrary they are designed and um, 
fulfilleth a certain function. Um, and the function is mostly derived from our needs and from our limitations being bodily beings with a human body uh, but I think in the virtual world we don't have the same limitations and therefore don't require the same functions and solutions for example I don't think there is a problem with working in a virtual environment but in order to work efficiently in a virtual environment there is no it's not necessary to recreate the work environment you have in the real world. Um, you would only need to recreate it as far as it would still serve its purpose. You know, but a desk, it, you know, has no intrinsic value. It, it serves a purpose, and if your avatar doesn't need a desk to work on, because it can work on, um, because its workspace is as, as big as you want it to, to be, and uh, if, because it can have um, any kind of environment, this is my working environment here, it's um, filled with a lot of beautiful women, it's just the guy I am. then why not make it any way you want it to be? Let me show you something. I've got to go to the hypergrid, and because I'm in the lower regions of the hypergrid, I have to make an intermediate jump. This sounds always so important, but... If you ever get the hang of it, it's really just simple. <coughs> But, um, and this is one, another thing what I would like about Maria's blog, you can just stumble across um, something. And I found this really, really, really nice region the other day on a very tiny grid called World's End, which is really a cool name for a grid. Um, because World's End is one of the um, places of this in the Sandman. The Sandman is a comic book by Neil Gaiman that ran from 1987 to 1995, um, featuring the story of Morpheus. And it's just the wildest story I've ever read in my whole life. Uh, it's highly recommended. Um, and in the book, there is a place called World's End, which is kind of a place between places. And I fashioned my inn at the end of the, end of the world quite closely to the place in the Sandman. So um, that's why I like this World's End thing. Okay, my region's not. doesn't want to play. Let's go to Maria's. Um, anyway, I found this great, um, place there, and that is kind of an illustration of um, <coughs> what I meant. Because um, because I believe that it, 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 it does matter what kind of environment our avatar finds our avatars find themselves in. Come on. 
um, because it makes us feel different. Um, it actually goes um, to prove the studies of um, Professor Balenson of uh, Stanford University, who made or still is making a lot of research. Let me restart here. about avatars and uh, human interaction and how the two relate to, uh, to one another. It's also a great speech on YouTube that I might link to if I remember all of this. Um, <coughs> so that when you make your environment or your avatar's environment nicer, not as confined as uh, office spaces, for example. Just more more nice, more more appealing to the eye, um, you feel more relaxed working there as well. Um, speaking of my own experience, there is a huge difference um, in what environment you are using to work in, uh, or actually anything that your avatar does and is and uh, looks like and um, finds themselves in is um, important. <coughs> because it will change the way you feel and the way you work and the way you think. And um, that's why we're going to Aloha. Destination is wegrid.net colon eight thousand two colon LOA. Um, <laughs> let's see if it displays everything this time. Last time I was there, some sculptors wouldn't dress, but um, still. Oh, come on, please. sluggish today. There we go. It's just something re I really like. This is just a wide expanse of water. A little sandy island. Nothing around. <coughs> Imagine working here. Imagine you would um, actually have your office, let's say, right here. sitting on your porch, looking out at the waves, having media on a prim, on your little desktop computer. It doesn't need to be a desktop computer. You can do, use any screen. And just use this as an office environment. A 
How would that make you feel? We probably will never be able to rent our own private islands and work from there. But we can do that right now, right here on the hypergrid, if we just want to. If we just put a little bit of effort and thought and ideas into what we are doing. I guess that's the point I'm trying to make. Uh, I could have said that in the beginning, but then you wouldn't have wasted an hour now listening to me ramble. So um, I'm leaving you with that. Thanks for listening, and um, I'll see you around.